Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we finally, finally have another favorites video. I feel like I can't even call this a monthly favorites because my last monthly favorites was over three months ago. <sighs> But obviously it's not because I'm slacking on content. Like you guys see I'm uploading five days a week right now, but it's hard for me to find enough new items that I haven't talked about in my last favorites video or the favorites video before that, that warrant an entirely separate video. You know what I mean? Like to have something be in a favorites video, I need to be obsessed with it. So that's why it takes me a while, but when I upload these, you know that it's gonna be good. So in today's video, I have clothing items, miscellaneous organization related items, a book, I have skincare, hair care, makeup, of course, all of those general beauty things per usual, just kind of all over the place, which is how I like to do favorites videos. And I know that you guys like that as well. So if you wanna see some of the items that I've been obsessed with over the past three and a half months, then you're in the right spot. Let's jump right into it. Okay, first is airy offline leggings, just in general. I have multiple pairs, which is why these have tags on them, because these are brand new, because I needed more. So this brand I've had success with in the past, just with loungewear and cozy clothes, but hadn't tried their leggings. They are so, so comfortable. They're like that buttery, silky, soft material, but not slickery and shiny, which I don't like. Oh, oh my gosh. I have a few different styles, so of course I'll have them all linked below with the actual title of the style. This one is called their Hugger Legging, and I got the size high rise long, size small. I love the fact that they have short, regular, and long sizes. We love inclusive height sizing. It's not something as a tall person that I often have the luxury of finding, unfortunately, so that is amazing. They fit me great in that way. Not gonna lie, the size small is a little bit snugger than I would like it to be right now, Let's just say I'm not in the best shape of my life. <laughs> and this pair, I really like that it has these zipper pockets in the front because then I can put my phone in there, my keys, my headphones when I'm going on a walk outside. And the reason that I love these aside from the fact that they're just so comfortable and fit well is that they're a little bit warmer and thicker so that I can actually walk around in them outside in the Minnesota winter on most days. I mean, when it's sub-zero polar vortex, that's a different story. Nothing's gonna save me at that point. But otherwise, if it's like 30, these keep me warm, especially once I get moving. And I really love that because <laughs> little lemon leggings, I feel like are best case scenario for that kind of thing. They're thick and not my favorite for working out because of how thick they are. But for an outside walk, they're so nice. But they're so expensive and I wanted several pairs. So I was adding to cart like, I'm gonna spend $500 on leggings right now. No, I'm not, exit. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. These are much more affordable and they're not quite as thick, but they're super comfy. So if you're not in a freezing cold place, I mean, that'll be even better for you. So I would definitely recommend looking into the Airy Offline legging brand in general. Amazing, amazing. I love them. Okay, the next thing is a gloss. And if you have watched a lot of my videos and you probably know that Buxom is my favorite lip gloss brand. I love Buxom glosses. Their formulation's amazing. The shades are amazing. I talk about them a lot, but this is something that I have been reaching for nonstop. It's from Morphe. It's their gloss in the shade Boho. I've actually had this for a really long time, but I feel like as of lately, I've really realized how staple crucial this is in my lip gloss collection. I feel like it's my perfect shade of neutral pink. I'll show you guys. I feel like the lighting was making that look almost peachy and it's definitely not. It's truly just a nice neutral wearable pink and I feel like this works so well for me on top of pretty much any of my favorite nude lipsticks. I do have a video swatching all of my favorite nude lipsticks, so I'll link that below if you haven't seen that yet, but this just works on everything or even on its own. I really, really love it. Nice formulation, it's lightweight, it's not sticky, but has a beautiful sheen. It's just, it's good. I mean, don't get me wrong, I totally get it. I think we've had enough of Morphe in a lot of other categories, but they do make a really good gloss. I have my list here of all of my favorites and I just realized that I don't have them categorized like I normally like to, like hair, makeup, clothes. We're gonna roll with it. It'll keep you guessing. Next is a sunscreen. It's from La Roche-Posay. It's their Anthelio 60 Melt-In Sunscreen Milk and I am in love with this formulation. It is so, so nice. So 
I told you guys this, I think actually in my haul where I hauled this for you guys, that I have been trying to put together a list of sunscreens that are close enough replacements. I wouldn't say quite dupes for the Purito sunscreen because how can you really dupe something that's an SPF 19? <laughs> But I've been trying to find good alternatives to that sunscreen because I know that that was so many people's favorite and they're now looking for something new to replace that. So this is one that I got for that purpose. It's not exactly the same, obviously, but I love this formula so much. The one potential downside is that if you have sensitive skin, this actually only has organic sunscreen filters or chemical filters. So avobenzone, homosale, octisale, and octocrylene are the filters, which I know definitely doesn't work for everybody and I have had certain sunscreens that only have organic filters in them that really irritate my skin and cause my skin to sting and burn but for whatever reason this formulation doesn't do that for me at all and I have really sensitive skin so I have been loving this there's no white cast it's just it's amazing it's lightweight it's non greasy it, <laughs> I love it so much Highly, highly recommend. Next is the Way Detox Shampoo. This looks like I haven't even opened the bottle yet, which I guess goes to show how little I truly need to use, but this is basically a clarifying shampoo that's specifically designed to remove buildup. So it's supposed to give you a really deep cleanse, not something that you're supposed to use every single time you wash your hair, if you wash your hair every day or every other day, because it can definitely be too stripping and drying if you do that. But once a week, it's amazing at helping to remove buildup whether that be from hard water or hair products, anything like that, it's so great. And I have been loving this because it just really, it really makes my hair cleaner, honestly. I can truly say that I've tried so many shampoos and I feel like I can go a whole full day, I mean, maybe even like two more days until my hair starts to look visibly greasy, which is huge for me. I mean, I'm not trying to extend time between washes any more than I do now. Once a week is, the max that I'm trying to go, but if I can make my hair look less greasy without feeling like my hair is really stripped and dried out, then that's amazing. So I love this. If you're trying to train your hair to wash it less, look into something like this because it's really awesome. Okay, next, super random. I told you we're jumping from category to category. Swimsuits. Yeah, right, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the bin that the swimsuits are in. <sighs> I have so many of these and I've had them honestly for a long time, but as many of you guys know, Eli and I recently moved, so I ended up purchasing more and I have these all over our apartment. They are so helpful for storage. If you share a closet, I mean, really for anything, I have a cubby hole organizer that I have these in. I have them on the top of my shelves in the closet. I have them in my bathroom. They come, I didn't even say what this is. It's from Target, it's their Y Weave basket, and they have a bunch of different sizes and I have literally all of them. So I'll link all of them below. They have taller ones, they have shorter, skinnier ones. It's, they're so good, just multi-purpose storage bins. You can use them for clothes, you can use them for books, you could use them for cleaning supplies, you could use them, I mean, for anything. They're so, they're so great and I have them everywhere. Next is gonna come as no surprise to a lot of you is the Geek and Gorgeous Jelly Joker Cleanser. This is my current favorite cleanser of the moment. It's so, so, so nice. If you have sensitive skin, if you just want something that's not going to be overly stripping, not going to cause irritation, hopefully, obviously I can't predict that, but this is definitely one worth looking into. It's a pretty basic ingredient label. It has some really nice hydrators, but there's not a ton going on which I have no issue with in a cleanser if it's going to properly cleanse my skin, but be really gentle in doing so and have an amazing formulation that I'm all in. The formula of this is probably officially my favorite cleanser formulation ever. I mean, it's a jelly cleanser. It feels so, so good. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And brownie points for having really cute packaging. Next is a detangling spray called The Wizard. So this is from Amika and it's their detangling primer. I don't know if my Amika review is going to be up yet by the time that I upload this video, but if it is and anything else that I have reviews on will be of course linked in my description box below, but I'm obsessed with this. I definitely get really snarly hair. I mean, it's just a combination of things. The hard water, the bleach, just, I have a lot of things working against me, so finding something like this was a godsend because my brush just glided. I was gonna say glid. 
My brush glides, there we go, straight through my hair when I use this. It's such a nice detangling spray. And it's because it has some really good plant-based oils in it that are going to just soften and smooth and also has an ingredient. I think it's the second ingredient, let's see. Oh, first, called cyclopendisiloxane that is specifically supposed to make your hair or skin silky smooth. So I don't know what they did here, but the wizard is the perfect name because this was magic on my hair. Next is a mascara, and this is gonna make me eat my words a little bit because I know that I've said before that I think high-end mascaras are kind of a waste of money. I mean, I would still kind of stand behind that. There's so many good drugstore mascaras. You don't have to splurge on a mascara to find a good one. My favorite of all time is drugstore, Maybelline Lash Sensational. But I always use a more voluminizing mascara after using my Maybelline Lash Sensational. And this one has been working so, so well for me. It's the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. It adds such good volume. It's kind of crazy how much volume this adds. It's not too wet on the lashes, but not too dry. It's just perfect in that sense. And it doesn't make my lashes look clumpy, which often can happen with this kind of mascara. So it's just a really basic focus, natural wand like this. Something that really doesn't look all that special, but for whatever reason, the formulation of this combined with that brush style and size is perfection. Next is a hairspray from Kenra. It's their Platinum Finishing Spray. It says it's a maximum hold hairspray. So on the back, they have a hold index from zero to 26. 26 being max, which they say this is. I don't know that I would agree that this is the most long wearing hairspray of all time. But to me, hairsprays that do that are always very crunchy and stiff and just they make your hair not touchable and they also don't look good in the hair either. So it's hard to find kind of that happy medium between something that leaves your hair relatively touchable but also holds curls in your hair and I feel like this does a good job of that. So whenever I use it, I do end up finger combing through my hair which obviously makes it not last as long but I think it does a good job while not being gross and just, you know how some hairsprays are gritty? This is not like that. So I like this one. Next is a serum from Vici. This is their Mineral 89 Skin Fortifying Daily Booster. I showed you guys this. It was kind of my first impression of this product in a Get Ready With Me where I was testing new skincare, which I will have linked below if it's up. I was in love with it immediately. The formulation is so, so, so nice. If you want a really nice hydrating serum that kind I mean, it's kind of similar to this where it's like a fluffier gel. I keep describing gels as fluffy and that makes absolutely no sense, but it's not one of those that's really, really liquidy and watery. It's just, I mean, it's more gel-like it feels. You guys know I love my jelly formulations. It feels amazing. It has hyaluronic acid and a couple other hydrators. I don't know that I would say the ingredients warrant the price point because I think it's closer to $30, but I think just the formulation and application experience, I'm like, okay, it feels luxury. I really, really like this and it definitely does hydrate the skin. So if you want an amazing feeling hydrating serum, maybe you're dealing with dehydration right now, like I know so many people are, this is a great one. Next up is a moisturizer from CauseRx called the B5 Deep Panthenol Cream. A couple different reasons why I love this. Number one, Panthenol I feel like is one of my favorite skincare ingredients of the moment. It's really nice at helping to calm and soothe the skin. It's hydrating and it's a great skin protecting ingredient. But this formulation is amazing. I feel like this is, it's like my perfect moisturizer formulation. I feel like this is like the upgrade to the CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. Did I just say that? You guys know I'm such a huge fan of that moisturizer, but if it were to be improved, it would be this. I feel like there's something almost kind of blurring about this moisturizer. It's still very lightweight, but I love, love this. Oh my goodness. So if you've been using CeraVe PM and you're interested in something that feels just a little, a little bit nicer, and you could benefit from that calming and soothing ingredient, this will be one for you. Speaking of calming and soothing, I have a drugstore option if you want something that you can pick up easier than that CauseRx one. The Cetaphil Redness Relieving Night Moisturizer for redness prone skin is amazing. Oh my goodness. So this also has panthenol in it, but on top of that, it also has allantoin, shea butter, sunflower seed oil, niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, ceramide NP, licorice root like there are so many amazing ingredients in this i feel like this is arguably cetaphil's best product i may say that and it's a little little bit thicker than that cause rx cream but 
I mean, honestly, not by much. They're very similar in formulation. I guess I would say it's a little thicker. And I also feel like something about this helps to kind of blur lines. So if you do have fine lines around the eyes that you're looking to kind of fill in before you apply sunscreen or makeup, this one is awesome and it feels so, so good. Both of these are sensitive skin gal approved. And then we have a hand cream. I am almost out of this and I need to use it right now. So you guys are gonna see this in an empties video soon probably. One moment. It's the Eucerin Advanced Repair Hand Cream. So it says it immediately soothes and repairs very dry skin and has ceramide three. It has natural moisturizing factors. This is such a nice hand cream. I am really particular about hand creams. I honestly used to never use them until recently because I just don't like the feeling of greasy hands. It grosses me out. This does not leave any sort of greasy residue. It just feels super, super nice. And I would say it's the perfect weight for a hand cream because aside from greasiness, I also just don't like really heavy feeling creams on the hands because I need to use my hands, you know? So I would definitely check this one out. Super affordable, so good. Doesn't have fragrance in it, which is good if you have really cracked, irritated hands, but also it's not like it smells great and it's on the hands, but that's okay. I think it's a really nice one. And I mean, the formula is just so good. So look into it, do yourself a favor. Next is the Kristen S. Straightener. I also showed this actually in my latest haul. I feel like a couple of the things that I hauled, I ended up really loving. So this is called her three in one, I think flat iron because you're supposed to be able to style your hair in three different ways with this. So not only can you just straighten the hair, but because it has this kind of curved barrel, you can curl your hair and create waves as well, which I love. I love that it's kind of three in one, more bang for your buck. And the reason that I got this is because I have face framing and layers around my face. And when my hair is straight, just blow dried, my layers start to look really funky. So I needed something like this to just style them a little bit, make them a little bit sleeker and smoother looking. And this does a great job at that, obviously. But if you're looking for kind of an all-in-one straightener that gives you some other styling options, you need this because also, is it not the cutest thing you've ever seen? I love the white. Oh my goodness. It's just, it's beautiful. Next is technically an ingredient. I do have one product that I'll show you guys here that I really like, but it's mandelic acid. So I uploaded a video on that ingredient recently. It's one that I've been very intrigued by because it's an alpha hydroxy acid, but it's supposed to be gentler on the skin than other AHAs like glycolic acid because the molecular weight is actually larger. So it's going to penetrate more slowly, making it safer for sensitive skin types. It's kind of one of those acids that should work for pretty much everybody. Obviously there will always be exceptions, but that's why I was drawn to it. And also, also because not only is it water soluble like other AHAs, but it's also oil soluble. So it's great if you have acne prone skin. Lately, my skin has been a disaster. I know that a lot of you guys are dealing with mask knee as well, but oh my gosh, the face mask breakouts have been real. So I have started to incorporate mandelic acid into my skincare routine. And in the past, I really wasn't, I mean, as of the past several months, I wasn't using any AHA in my routine because my skin's been so sensitive that it just was really irritating my skin and I didn't want to take the gamble until I found this. Because it's safer for sensitive skin, I've had really good luck with this. It doesn't cause irritation. It doesn't excessively sting and burn. So is this something that's going to give you as potent anti-aging effects as something like glycolic acid? Definitely not. But if you're looking for an exfoliant that's especially beneficial for oily skin, mandelic acid may be for you. So this is the Geeking Gorgeous Cheer Up 6% mandelic plus BHA liquid. So if you want something that's kind of a liquid tonery type product without all of the irritating drying ingredients that toners usually have. This one is awesome. So the salicylic acid, of course, will help in combination with that mandelic acid if you're acne prone. Otherwise, the Ordinary does have a 10% mandelic acid serum with hyaluronic acid. Not my favorite formulation of all time, but if you don't want something that has salicylic acid in it as well, then that's an option for you. So I'm really liking that ingredient. Okay, my next favorite is actually an acne spot treatment and it's any sort of hydrocolloid dressing. So this is such an interesting spot treatment because unlike something like benzoyl peroxide that is an active ingredient that kills acne bacteria, there's no active ingredient in this. There are certain kinds, certain versions that they have added ingredients to to help to kill acne bacteria or help to shrink your breakout more quickly, but in general, they don't have any ingredients in them and they just help to promote healing because they basically help to absorb pus and oil from the breakout. So 
I really like them because as I started to use benzoyl peroxide spot treatments more and more, as my face mask breakouts got worse and worse, I just realized that my skin doesn't tolerate those higher concentration spot treatments very well. It's just very irritating on my skin, especially because I already use tretinoin. So I just feel like the combination of those two things, I wasn't using them in the same part of my skincare routine, but I think just the fact that I'm more susceptible to sensitivity because of my tret use is what I'm trying to say, means that a benzoyl peroxide spot treatment doesn't work very well for me right now. So that's why I love this because it really does help to fully absorb that pus and get rid of that breakout more quickly than it would on its own, but with zero irritation for me. And I also really like it because even though you can kind of see the, you can see it on your face, obviously, it also kind of masks that breakout. So it camouflages it a little bit so that I'm less likely to pick and pop at the breakout, which is always helpful because even though I know it's bad, I mean, obviously I'm human. I'm tempted to do that too, to just get it off my face, even though I regret it every time. And this helps to make sure that I don't do that. So this is the Mighty Patch from Hero Cosmetics. They do have one that I think has salicylic acid and maybe tea tree oil in it, which I don't love, but this doesn't have any of that. This is actually their invisible patch, so it's a little bit thinner. So if you want something that isn't as obvious on your face as some others can be, then this is definitely one to look into. I really, really like it. Okay, I just have a couple more favorites. The next one is very random. I can't set it right here because it's massive, but of course I will show you guys a little clip of it. It is my vanity mirror, and I feel like this is the best comeback story ever. I'm so excited to be sharing it with you guys. When I first started my YouTube channel, I think in the very beginning I did a vanity tour and I had a lot of questions, well, not a lot, because I think that probably had like two views. I had some questions after that video asking where I got my vanity mirror, and I was like, you know what, I don't love it, so I feel like I can't recommend it to you guys, and that's because I was stupid. So I didn't realize, because I am horrible at reading directions, that there's a specific kind of light bulb you're supposed to put in a mirror like that, that allows it to light up in the best way. Basically, I didn't read the directions, I didn't know that, so I just got generic light bulbs, and the vanity mirror that I have has a dimmer on it, which I thought would be really cool at first, but with those other kinds of light bulbs that they didn't recommend, it lit up differently. So like the whole left side of the mirror and the bulbs would be fully bright and then totally shut off on the other side, which was very, very frustrating. But I realized that I didn't have the right light bulb in them. I found the perfect light bulbs for them that I'll link below as well. They're also just way bigger and brighter and they're white light versus yellow, which is they're just perfect. So now that I have the right light bulb in them is what I'm trying to say. My goodness, longest explanation ever. I love this vanity mirror. It's amazing. It has outlets in it. It has just a switch on it so you can turn it on and off, but it also has that dimmer if you want to make it brighter or less bright. It's just, it's such, it's such a good vanity mirror. And I got it off of Etsy and I was so sad about it forever because it's definitely a pricey purchase. It's a splurge for sure, but I feel like there are some vanity mirrors that cost like 500 plus dollars and this was not quite so crazy. So I now love it. Okay. And it wouldn't be a favorites video without me talking about a couple book favorites. So I have two that I wanted to share with you. I don't have either of them here with me because I lent them out so that my friends could read them and enjoy them. But the first is Daisy Jones and the Six. This book is unlike anything that I've ever read before. It's actually set up in interview form, which makes it really, really addicting to read. I could not stop reading it. It is such a good story. Basically the setting is like a 70s rock band and how it came up into success and all of the ins and outs of the rock band scene and of course love interests and I just got chills. I'm a joke. Daisy Jones and the Six, so, so good. I would highly recommend. It was very different for me than my normal favorite kind of book, which you guys know I'm really into kind of psychological, twisty, crime, thriller type novels, nothing like that, but I absolutely loved it. And then the other one that does kind of fall into that category a little bit more that I've also read recently and really liked is called The Other Woman. So the premise of this book is basically that there's a girl who meets this guy, they start dating, she really likes him, she's introduced to his mom, and she starts to realize that something is fishy with the mom. She kind of feels like the mom is sabotaging her relationship, but she can't tell if she's being paranoid or if she's overreacting or if the mom is truly trying to screw up her relationship. 
that she has with the mother's son. And the end of it, my mouth dropped open. I was not expecting that at all. So that's another really good one that is more of that twisty type novel. So both of those are awesome, two totally different types of books, but I really liked both. All right, you guys, that is everything for this video. Those are a lot of the things that I've been loving lately that I wanted to share with you. I do have to say, even though I said in the beginning of this that it's hard for me to come up with favorites video material frequently, I feel like I had a lot more that I wanted to talk about in this video that maybe I can save for another one sooner than three months from now. So if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. All of those things really help to support me and my channel and mean so much to me. And of course, as always, please leave your current favorites in the comments below so that we can all share the love. Also, if you want more favorites type videos, I do have three Amazon favorites videos up already and some try on hauls that I would just say in general, all of the things that I tried on in those hauls are my favorites. I love all of the clothes that I've gotten over the past few months, best sweaters, loungewear, just, I feel like I really hit the nail on the head with my clothing purchases over the fall and winter this year. So if you want some clothing, inspo, some finds there, then I'll have all of those linked below. But other than that, if there's anything else that you would like to see next, leave that request in the comments as well. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days, so stay tuned for that. And until then, I hope you have a great few days.